Right, I've wood chipped this area in front of the uh, bins. So it's now time to put this plastic on here, cover this area, and then I can forget about it. Right, that's uh, that edge of the bed done. I've got a long piece, and what I'm going to do is cover this edge. So I'll take this border off, which I don't need. The border's going to come this way anyway. So this is in the wrong place. So that can go. Okay, I've just got to clear a few bits and pieces off that corner. There's still a bit of uh, stone here, still a bit of the uh, stone edging laid in there, so I'm just going to put a little bit of wood chips on top of it, around it. Just the stuff on that edge. So I won't cut through the plastic. Right. That'll do. Everything else should be alright. Broken piece of terracotta pot. We don't want that in there. That'll cut into the plastic. We want to leave it in effect. We might as well get another use out of it. Just over that side. Now there will be a little bit left along this edge. But I'm not too worried about this bit. Because this is in front of all the other rubbish. So uh, that's fine. So I'll do that and bring you back. So just put a last couple of bricks. So this is now done all the way up to here. I've already wood chipped this area, as you can see, up to sort of there. So it's overlapped the wood chipped area. But there's a bit in front of the uh, Anderson shelter which isn't covered, but I can live with that. If I've got most of it covered, that bit doesn't matter. I'm going to be harvesting those nettles anyway, and I've got uh, Logan berries there as well. So that bit's fine. There's a rhubarb here behind this chair which is doing fine. Now I put a lot of rubbish on top of it just to obviously keep the plastic down so all this stuff will hold it down. All the bits of asbestos that I dug up just use them as weight for that. We need a heavy piece to go here. But it's not a heavy piece but it'll do. And I'll we'll find something heavy to go there later. And now I can wood chip this path between this bed and that cold frame. Well you can't see the cold frame but if I lift this carpet you can see the bricks of it so I'll get to that but for now it'll do there's a lot of carpet in there so uh, that's for another day so I can sort out the edging here on this path I mean it's got a double layer of carpet there but it's still you can see all the stuff's grown through it but hopefully once I lift the carpet a lot of that stuff will come with it so that's this top area sorted minus the two coal frames but uh, once uh, that gooseberry there is taken out it's still connected to the main bush once that goes then i can go in and clear that area and then the other coal frame well i won't need that till next year anyway this uh, fruit bed is riddled with buttercups but i can uh, deal with that later i'll bring some cardboard in once this year's raspberries have come up i can then see where they are and uh, work around them because I don't want to do it right now because uh, this uh, young one's coming up like this one and there might be some of this uh, still on the way up so I'll leave it for a bit and end of the spring early summer I'll deal with all the uh, buttercups. The apple tree you can see it's doing fine now I've given it a light prune I'll uh, sort these bits and pieces out later in the year this bed is sorted planted mulched I just took some of the stones out of this bed to cover that plastic. So there's a few bits of metal lying about. There's some bits of carpet and things, but it shouldn't take too long to sort out because it's had all the carpet on it. So uh, that won't take long to sort. And uh, all that's remaining is the bean bed really. And I can sort that. Something or someone has been around and they tipped a lot of these out. And I thought maybe a mouse had knocked them over, but they're all empty and I can see no sign of it. So I'm a bit uh, confused why. I mean, oh yeah, they're sort of there, aren't they? So maybe they, they've just knocked everything over. 
It's a bit bizarre. Somebody put a message out that they had a few bottles that they used to build a greenhouse. So I thought they had a few. And when she arrived, there was uh, quite a lot more than I expected. Of course, I couldn't then just say, oh, I don't want all that, take it back. So uh, I put a message out on the site's Facebook page to say I've got these and if anybody else wants some they can come and get some but I've got rather a lot of these bottles to deal with. Far more than I uh, need <laughs> but uh, no wonder she looks so pleased to get rid of them. <laughs> ah crumbs. I did get myself into trouble and just for scale that is a one ton builder's bag and these <laughs> just swamped it. Hopefully someone will come and take a few of these. I've just noticed that uh, all my seed potatoes have disappeared. Every single one. So these were the uh, second earlies that I should have put in yesterday but uh, because I was fixing the wheelbarrow I didn't get around to doing this. And they disappeared overnight. Every single one. Taking one or two I can understand but they've left me nothing. Not, not one. Nothing. They are blighters. Absolute blighters. They're all nicely chitted and ready to be planted and they're all gone. Oh well, I've uh, lost all the chitted potatoes but at least I've got these uh, ones that I put in pots early so uh, at least I've got something. So these are going to go in those big blue barrels and I'm going to put them over here. So the job this morning is to clear this area, get rid of all this stuff and mulch it and put those potatoes in the barrel. Now the soil to go in the barrels will come from this which is just a weedy old bathtub but in amongst all this lot is some parsley that uh, the previous uh, tenants put in and apparently it's a nice parsley and they wanted some of it so I'll dig up a few plants and put them in small pots and see if we can uh, keep them going. I've cleared an area about less than two square meters and it was just a solid mat of grass roots and weeds and a few odd strawberries because last year I left it to see what the strawberries would do and they did nothing so these strawberries are coming out just going in the compost but uh, cleaning this little area less than two square meters I've got half a barrel full of uh, stuff and it's all thick roots and matted just matted roots and things it's just uh, horrible anyway I've cleared the area I need today for the uh, potato barrels so we'll get on with that I've wood chipped along all the edges it'll stop the wind getting in under the uh, plastic it won't blow away but it'll stop it getting in and rattling about and weakening the plastic. Secondly, anything that tries to creep in off from the edge of the plastic will uh, hit the mulch so uh, it'll have an even tougher job and if it comes out the other end of the mulch I can just pull it out. So this is all done, all these edges covered. The uh, wood chips go right up to the edge of the uh, coal frame. There's the bricks of the edge of the coal frame so it goes up to that. And this is all wood chip these edges so I've still got uh, quite a bit of uh, this stuff left so uh, I will deal with that at some point I will uh, deal with this as well but uh, at the moment I've got stuff that needs to go into the ground urgently so uh, get on with the planting now if I remove some of these dandelion leaves you'll be able to see vastly better so, there's the parsley, I want to save, Very if I dig deep, I should be able to, well, there we go, right, so, well that's, so that's a healthy parsley, shake all the weed roots off it, and uh, we can put these into pots, and then we can uh, save a few of these, right, well that's the parsley all potted up, and uh, watered, so uh, we'll see how it goes. I'll keep a few and uh, hand uh, over a few to Tim. Strawberries seem to be perking up and doing fine. And these strawberries, the uh, Royal Sovereign, seem to be doing fine. Uh, these, that one, that one are a bit slower than the others, but look at that, it's just shot up. Considering <laughs> what they looked like a few days ago, they've done remarkably well. I've cleared this tub. I haven't, uh, completely got every root out because I'll be digging this out to put in those barrels so I'll take those roots out but just clearing that tub got whew, 
all these roots and greens a big pot full of them so they'll go in the uh, special compost bag so now I can start putting the uh, soil from there into these pots and put the potatoes in Tony has uh, set some uh, beer traps around this bed and we have overnight managed to catch a few slugs in there so uh, that's good now I've put some of the uh, matted grass and roots in there I've taken anything that had weeds in it into the other compost bin but uh, what I've done is put all the grass and bits of strawberries and things at the bottom of these blue barrels just a bit not too much so uh, they'll sit there and they'll rot away nicely over the course of uh, the summer into next spring. When I take the potatoes out I'll sieve it and put uh, all the uh, uncomposted stuff back at the bottom of the barrels and then do the same next year and by then it'll just die off and decompose. Right so I can start putting the potatoes in. What I'm going to do is add a little bit of uh, potato fertilizer because there was some in the shed so I might as well use it up and I've got some blood fish and bone which I normally add to everything so I'll add that as well okay so a bit of fertilizer little fish blood and bone now potato plant can go in it's actually starting to push out <laughs> you can see the roots on that I've got plenty of these bottles that were given to me so I'm going to do is use that so that when I water I'm actually watering into plant fed and quite many of those so I'll water from there and it will uh, go into the soil at the bottom and not soak the uh, wood chips at the top because the roots will be down there and that's where I want the water to go obviously the rain will soak the top but when I water, I want the water to go down to the roots and not to soak the top. And then, it's just adding these uh, clippings which will rot down. But as they rot down, they will feed the potatoes and become compost. In a couple of years, this will be compost that I can use to mulch other beds. This one has started developing tubers. <laughs> Having that compost heap over there is handy for putting it into the potatoes over there. So that's handy. Well, the rat likes the slug pellets. So what I've done is I've uh, put uh, a few in that uh, milk container top. And then there's a trap with some cheese and a bit of meat in it. So hopefully it'll come for that. The others are all empty, so it'll come. It's been eating the uh, slug pellets, we know it likes them. So uh, we'll come for a visit for that, and then it'll smell this, and hopefully it will uh, go for that. I knew I had a, a bottle of uh, slug pellets, and it disappeared because it was sitting here on the shelves. And it disappeared, and I wondered what had happened to it, and I thought maybe I misplaced it. But then I moved some things, and look, it's chewed through taking it back there, chew through and eating all the slug pellets and people say oh don't put a pellet of slug pellets down it's dangerous to wildlife the bloody things are eating it unbelievable the bastards he's coming here and eating that because I was wondering what the hell happened I'm sure, I was sure I had another one so I went and got another packet the bloody rats have been eating it what do you think? If the trap doesn't catch it today, I will uh, come in and throw everything out, out of here. Because obviously this is where it's nesting and having a party, so all this stuff's got to go. I was hoping not to have to go through all this stuff, but looks we'll have to because obviously there's evidence that he's around here. So we'll see if the trap catches him in the next couple of days. If it doesn't, then I'll have to come in and have a clear out of here. All right, that's the four potatoes in. So what I'm going to do is uh, put some uh, cover on it so that uh, when we get frost we don't want these damaged seeing as the rats have eaten the rest of my potatoes. The uh, 
potato hoop tunnel is done and they're there nice and uh, protected because we had a frost last night and they all seem to be fine it's not elegant but it'll do just to protect the potatoes for a few weeks because we still get frosts as you can see this water's frozen. Well, those two front barrels, I haven't uh, done anything with them yet, but I'll put something in those. This strawberry bed of uh, marshmallows was a big disappointment last year. I mean, it's getting old, it, it really needs to be replaced. So uh, we took some runners off these. John took a few of them. I've got a couple left here. I'll take some more runners off this this year and then this is coming out for next year. Next year this will all be something else. But for now I'm just going to repot these uh, two strawberries into something bigger and they're going to uh, a new bed next year. I had a few packets of broad bean seeds with a few in each one that were getting out of date so uh, I sowed those into pots and these are the ones that germinated and came up so uh, I'm going to sow the new lot on the other plot but I brought these in and I'll put them in a pot over on this plot because the broad bean bed on the other plot isn't ready yet so I'll just put these into a pot and they can just grow in the pot they'll be fine they'll, they'll produce they may not produce as well as they would have done in the ground but uh, they'll produce something